Hey guys, Alexander here, and in this video I will be showing you how to derive the expected value and the variance of the gamma distribution using the definition of expected value for continuous distributions. So the first thing we need to note is that the expected value of x, if x is a, is a, follows one of the continuous distributions, is defined as the integral over the entire support of x, all the values that this little x can take from the set, the big, or the big capital X or the random variables, of x, f of x, dx. Now we know that for a gamma random variable, let's say gamma with parameter, shape parameter alpha and like parameter lambda, it's the f of x, the probability density function, is given by lambda e to the negative lambda x multiplied by lambda x to the power of alpha minus 1 divided by alpha minus 1 factorial. So let's get cracking at this. The expected value of x is going to be the integral from the lowest value of our support, which is 0, to the highest value, which is infinity, of lambda e to the negative lambda x, and don't forget the x in front, multiplied by lambda x to the power alpha minus 1 over alpha minus 1 factorial. Now we see that we, we have a lambda x over here, and we also have one inside the brackets over here. So let's group them together. So this integral, oh, don't forget your dx, don't forget your dx ever. This integral simply becomes e to the negative lambda x multiplied by lambda x to the power of alpha plus 1 minus 1 over alpha minus 1 factorial dx. Now, at this stage, you might be asking yourself, how am I going to do this? Do I really have to go do integration all these number of times or do some proof by induction? So, no, we don't need to do any of that. Well, there is a reason I wrote this alpha plus 1 in square brackets over here, because this is going to give us an indication of what the form is of the new PDF that we're going to try to construct so that we don't have to do any integration at all. And since we have an alpha plus 1 here, but we have an alpha over here for a gamma alpha lambda, let's try to make this entire integral of the form of the PDF of a gamma alpha plus 1 and lambda. So the parts that are connected to alpha is solely this exponent and this one over here. So we can bring this out. So our expected value of x becomes it's equal to integral from 0 to infinity of alpha minus 1 factorial multiplied by e to the negative lambda x times lambda x to the power of alpha plus 1 minus 1 over some some factor we're going to have to put in there. So as you as we noted for the PDF of a gamma distribution, if you look at this part here, we need a lambda here. And we also need one over here. So let's add a lambda at here. So we multiply here, but that means we're going to have to divide by a lambda here so that the two will cancel out. So we're going to have to add a lambda here. And we also need this part we need whatever our shape parameter is minus one and in a factorial that's going to be alpha plus one minus one factorial and we have to multiply by this at the top as well and let's rewrite this into a nicer format alpha factorial over alpha minus one factorial times lambda integral from zero to infinity of lambda e to the negative lambda x multiplied by lambda x to the power alpha over alpha factorial. And what we have just done is we have successfully rewritten our PDF of into the form of the PDF of a gamma distribution with the shape parameter of alpha plus one, but the same rate parameter. And since we know that we're integrating from 0 to infinity of f of x dx, 
which is in this case equal to the integral of all the values that our probability density function can take, well, that's simply going to evaluate to one. And then we're left with the expected value of x is equal to simply what's here on the left-hand side, which is going to be alpha times alpha minus one factorial over alpha minus one factorial times lambda, which resolves to alpha over lambda. So the expected value of x is equal to alpha over lambda. And the trick here, and this is a trick that can be applied to all the continuous distributions, is try to get, when you multiply by x, try to get your new function that is inside your integral into the form of another um, similar uh, distribution. So we started off with a gamma with alpha and lambda, each PDF we multiplied by x. We brought this lambda times x inside the exponent, and we saw that then we got a hint of what the new distribution is going to be. It's alpha plus one. So the new shape parameter should be alpha plus one. So let's then rewrite our integral so that it looks like the probability density function of a gamma uh, random variable with a shape parameter of alpha plus one, which is what we did over here. To do that, we needed to add a lambda in again. That means we had to divide on the outside of the integral with lambda. And we had to remove the alpha minus one factorial. We took it outside and then we multiplied by an alpha factorial at the top and we had to divide by an alpha factorial at the top, which left us with the integral over the PDF of a gamma distributed random variable over its entire support, and we know this integral simply resolves to one. So then we're left with this expression that was outside of the integral, which if we simplify, we find the expected value to be alpha over lambda. So it's as simple as that. We don't need to go do any integration. All we need to do is we need to see that there is a way to change this PDF into another one, which will allow you to find the, this integral over the entire support over a probability density function, which simply evaluates to one. So no integration needed, no difficulties, a very simple and easy way to derive the expected value of x. And this approach can be applied in general to all the continuous distributions, and you can especially use it to derive the moment generating function. Carrying on, we've already derived the expected value of a gamma distributed random variable. So let's go on and derive the variance. Now we know that the shortcut formula for the variance is equal to the expected value of x squared minus the square of the expected value of x. So we have derived the expected value of x. Let's derive the expected value of x squared. Now for a continuous distribution, the expected value of x squared is the integral over the entire support of x squared f of x dx. And for a gamma distributed random variable x that has a shape parameter alpha and a right parameter lambda, this integral simply becomes the integral from zero to infinity of x squared lambda e to the negative lambda x, lambda x to the power of alpha minus one over alpha minus one factorial. And don't forget your dx. Now, let's similarly do what we did on the other side. We have an x squared here, and we also have an x here with a certain exponent. So let's bring them into one, one uh, single uh, set of brackets and let's see what we can do from there on. So we have our lambda e to the negative lambda x. We have a lambda to the power alpha minus one. And we have an x to the power of two plus alpha minus one. So we have a new, we should try to get this into the form of a gamma distribution with a shape parameter of alpha plus two and the right parameter of lambda. So we have, this is our goal. And in fact, this probability distribution function will look like this.
this is what we're trying to achieve. So as we can see, we already have this part and we have the X part uh, as it should be on this segment. We need to add th to the lambda over here and we need to change this bottom factorial part. So let's go do that. So the expected value of X squared is going to be equal to The expected value of x squared is thus going to be equal to, let's bring this outside, we will remove what we do not need. And since we have an alpha minus 1 in this, as the exponent here for this lambda, we're going to need to multiply uh, by the bottom here, or essentially divide by 2 lambda squared, so that this part can then we can go multiply and add our lambda squared in here. Lambda equals the negative lambda x multiplied by lambda to the power alpha minus 1 times lambda squared, which is what we need over here. So the numerator is sorted out. Now we need to sort out the denominator. The denominator has to be alpha plus 2 minus 1 factorial and we need to bring in the alpha plus 2 minus 1 factorial over here and then we can see congratulations we've rewritten the, this probability this uh, expected value of x squared as some constant multiplied by the integral over the entire support of a gamma distributed random variable with the shape parameter of alpha plus 2 and the right parameter of lambda. So since we're integrating over the entire support of it, we know this integral resolves to 1. And then all that reminds is we need to go and figure out what is this part on the left-hand side. So this is alpha plus 1 factorial divided by alpha minus 1 factorial lambda squared, which is equal to alpha plus 1 times alpha times alpha minus 1 factorial divided by alpha minus 1 factorial lambda squared and we know that this simply resolves to alpha plus 1 times alpha over lambda squared because this cancels with this. So now we've derived the second moment of the gamma distribution. We have expected value of x squared. So let's go plug this into our variance shortcut formula. The variance of x is equal to the expected value of x squared minus the square of the expected value of x and what this resolves to is alpha plus 1 times alpha over lambda squared minus alpha over lambda squared which is equal to alpha squared over lambda squared plus alpha over lambda squared minus alpha squared over lambda squared and we know that these two cancel out and we're left with alpha over lambda squared. Congratulations! You have derived the variance of a gamma distributed random variable. You've also derived its expected value and you've not once done any integration at all. You didn't do any integration in either of these scenarios. You simply used the fact that we can go transform the probability distribution function from a gamma of one sort to another gamma and then we are left with some constants on the left hand side of our integral which we can resolve later but the key is to always look always try to find another form that you can write this integral into so that it can look like the probability density function of a random variable that you know and if you can do that then you can just simply resolve the integral to one without having to do integration because you know it is a rule that the integral over the entire support of a continuous distribution from uh, this continuous random variable will resolve to one and then you just need to resolve what's on the left hand side here and then plug it into the appropriate formulas so that's that's that for this video thank you for watching and i hope i've made your studies and you the pursuit of your studies in statistics easier poor commander out